Hey everyone, welcome to Mama From Scratch. My name is Emily and I hope you're all having a beautiful day so far. Today we are gonna be cleaning off and decorating the front porch for springtime. We're gonna be planting lots of spring flowers, adding lots of pop-up color to the porch and also the front yard. So I hope you guys are excited. Got lots to share with you. I pretty much have my own little nursery going on here on the front porch. So I need to clear off all these plants I have been collecting over the last few weeks for the front yard, the porch, and also the back patio. I've got lots of makeovers to share with you, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on those videos and have your bell notification on. Love to be able to inspire and motivate you through DIYs, decorating makeover videos. And in today's video, I've got lots of easy DIYs to share with you, including a bench and a couple signs. And then we're gonna be gardening, sharing with you a couple tips with that, as well as decorating your front porch. So I hope you guys were excited, so let's go ahead and get started. The weather has finally warmed up here. We are in the 60s now and it's feeling so nice. Um, but with that, we have gone from mud to little dust everywhere. So I am gonna try to clean up this porch and hopefully keep all of this dirt out of the house. How is the weather where you guys are? I decided to do approach the cleaning the porch with three easy steps. First, sweep it off, then blow it off, and then use the hose on it. Oh my goodness, I was such a mess after this. <laughs> it was pretty gross. I know a lot of people like custom floor mats, so instead of going out and buying one, you can make one with your Cricut Maker. I want to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. I am going to be using freezer paper to make a stencil for my floor mat. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my Cricut design space and I actually pulled this welcome from the picture area and I needed to slice it because my mat is only 24 inches so I needed to slice off the sides so I just used the shapes and then basically highlighted that and I was able to um, separate the word and then I just put those off to the side because I'm going to add those somewhere else that way I still cut them make my welcome word much larger and then I went ahead and just put to our neck of the woods and you can customize this. I will have mine linked down below though if you like the design and everything. Now for cutting it, you're gonna wanna change the uh, part to freezer paper. And I like this because when you use your uh, mat, it has these guides on the side which keeps everything in line. You don't have to worry about your mat squiggling and ruining your design. It's a one cut process. And with the Cricut Maker, you can cut over 300 different types of materials from delicate paper, fabric, mat board, leather, basswood. It's pretty awesome and I just love the fact that you can use it to cut sewing patterns and different things. Like the possibilities are endless. As you saw, I went in with my weeding tool and then I'm going to peel off the freezer paper. Be very gentle with it because it is pretty thin. I went ahead and cleaned my mat and then I'm using my Easy Press 2 to heat the surface. And when you use freezer paper, there is a shiny side and a matte side. You want to make sure that when you're cutting it, you put the shiny side down. And the shiny side is down here because there's like a stickiness on the back of that that you don't feel but with the easy press it heats it up and so i just kind of worked my way with um, the welcome cut out here and letting it sit on there and if you go to cricut.com it will let you know what temperature you need for what material you are going to be adhering with your easy press then i just took my waverly chalk paint in black and then i'm dabbing that on just like a normal stencil that way it wouldn't bleed through and then you're going to let that dry. You can speed it up with a blow dryer and then you're just going to peel off all of the freezer paper. It comes off really easily and then all those little small pieces you can just use your weeding tool to remove those as well. And then the last step for your outdoor rug is you're going to want to seal it. I used this back in the fall and it has held up great. I did one really good coat all over the lettering and any art that I painted. And you can see I'm washing it off. It held up to all of our mud during the winter and 
it looks brand new still. So I'm really pleased with that. So hopefully you guys can make one as well. Check the description box below so you can check out my design. You can look at all, a lot of other ones that are on Cricut.com and their picture gallery when you go to the Cricut design space and everything. So I will be sharing with you also how to make a really easy sign for the porch as well. Again, fully customizable. So I'm just washing everything off trying to get rid of all that excess dirt that is everywhere. Something I did have to do though, which worked really well, was to actually get the um, broom that I was using earlier and use it to scrub the concrete and it would get off anything that was really stuck on there. And then I just went back and rinsed that all off and it worked really well too. And then to help the drying process go a little bit quicker for me, um, I just used my blower on everything. It started from the top and worked my way down and it really helped everything dry a lot faster. Now we're going to move on to the next DIY, which is the porch sign. And I just used my black paint and then I just used a scrap piece of wood and then I used a one by two and I trimmed that down so I could make the wood go further because I didn't have enough one by twos. And I just used my table saw to rip that down. If you don't have that, you can just go to the store and buy a one by two, but I know lumber is a little bit more expensive now. So I was just trying to use everything that I had. Then I sanded all the boards down, getting rid of all those rough edges edges and then I took some stain and rub that in with a rag and then we're gonna set that out to dry now I'm gonna be using some removable vinyl here for this and I'm gonna be using my light grip mat and cutting the vinyl to the size that I need then I went into Cricut Design Space and typed out the word welcome in Magnolia Sky font and then when I'm ready to print it I go to choose the product I want to cut which is the vinyl then you hit the little C that's blinking and it will start cutting the vinyl for you it does all the work you just have to design what you you want to print it out and then you just need to transfer your vinyl to your work service so I use transfer paper that vinyl makes I like to de-stick it a little bit that way it's not as sticky when you have to remove it then you're just going to apply it to your project surface and then remove the transferred paper and you can save that don't get rid of that it will work a couple times actually for you and then if any of the letterings come off like some of the E's and stuff you can just go back and reapply those um, not hard I will say if you're using a rougher surface you're going to want to use a permanent vinyl to actually apply this um, that way it has extra stickiness to it and then I'm just using some Waverly chalk paint in white and going over the um, area that I removed if you do have a really smooth piece of wood, you could actually, instead of weeding out the lettering, you would just weed out the extra part and then just transfer the vinyl as your actual sign. Um, but if it's not a super smooth surface, it's not going to stick as well. So just keep that in mind. This is a nice rough wood. So I decided to paint it on that way it would last. And then any like touch-ups I needed to do because it's a rougher wood, um, I just went in with a paintbrush and fixed those little blemishes. But it's like new and the rug looks like new and now we're going to start decorating the porch for spring i have these beautiful lilacs in these walmart pots they are so beautiful i'll have everything linked down below for you now these are not going to stay in the pots forever they'll eventually be transferred to the yard but i'm going to enjoy them while i can in the pots and then I got this pot from Home Depot and I really liked um, how square and kind of tall it was. And then I got these faux uh, cedar um, plants to put in the pots. You can totally do real, but we have deer and elk and they like to eat everything. So they're not gonna wanna eat the fake stuff. So that's why I decided to do these and they are UV rated. So I stuck those to the side here and you're probably thinking, why don't you swap them? It's just wait till you see at the end. I got this beautiful hydrangea from Home Depot. I love it. And then this pot actually came from Lowe's and it has a really cool texture on it. I really like it. I was actually going to paint it, but I kind of like the coloring with the house. It looks really good. So I stuck those in. I have to get more potting soil and so I will transfer that over just for now. It's what's going to happen. And then I added this really cute little pink plant. I thought it looked really pretty with the purple and don't worry, all the tags will be removed. Um, but a couple months ago, we actually started working on the front area, putting down some landscape fabric and some gravel, but it was just so muddy and it was so cold. It just 
didn't I wanted to wait until plants came in and the nurseries got them and everything so we are finishing that project today I am adding all the landscape fabric in to help suppress the weeds I know it's not going to be perfect but it's a lot better than the dust pit that we have right now because we have nothing out there we're starting from scratch and so I'm just tucking this underneath they do have landscape like uh, longer like nail things to go couldn't find it and that's what happens when you put off a project for a couple months you can't find anything um, but we're just gonna work our way and make this it's a very slow process um, it's a lot of work let me tell you I was so sore after this but it's gonna be totally worth it because it's gonna look so pretty once we actually have some color out here and you know everything's just gonna kind of happen we've only been in this house for about six months or so and so it feels good to finally like be putting our personal touch on things outside as well as inside. So for the outdoor plant varieties, I got different types of lavender, sages, as well as catnip herbal items that the deer and elk won't be attracted to to eat because they're smelly. Out of nowhere, the clouds rolled in and it started downpouring. So I ended up just going to the next day and we are working on the bench now so I ended up picking up some center blocks just to make a really easy bench I wanted to make a full wood one but wood has just gone through the wood roof so I decided to use two center blocks it felt like the right height for the bench and then I ended up finding these in the garage that were left over from the kitchen and so I was like great I have these and so I just let them hang over about four and a half inches on each side and then I made my mark that way I could cut off the extra Now you could just place the boards on your center blocks, but I actually wanted to connect them together. So I'm using my little Craig jig. Um, they have a couple different styles of this. And this is the cheapest one. I think it's like $15. And so I'm just using a clamp to clamp it on. And then I am using the um, drill bit that comes with it to drill that out. And that allows you to basically um, screw two pieces of wood together without it um, splitting the wood and also keeping it flush, the two pieces of wood. So I ended up just alternating this, put about four in each um, board. And then I just took some tight bond to wood glue and added that in between on basically on one board and then I sandwiched those together. Um, and just make sure that your work surface is level. I tend to work on the floor because it's bigger and it's flat, so it works best for me. And then they make pocket hole screws for you that you'll use and drill those in. And it's really simple and you're gonna do that on both sides so it pulls each board together. And then you're gonna go ahead and sand that down once that's all done, removing any of those little splinters. I use 80 grit and then 120. And then you're gonna go ahead with whatever color stain you want. This is a stain that I had from our last house. It's a mixed by Sherman Williams. They can actually customize any type of stain for you like they do paints, which I think is pretty cool. I uh, Make sure you wear some gloves that do not uh, leak through because you don't want the stain on your hands. It's really hard to get off. But I just used a rag and rubbed that in the direction of the wood grain. It's really important that you do that. And then once that has dried, then you're gonna go in with a sealer. I use polyacrylic and I'm using a clear mat for this because I don't want a, a lot of shine on it. You could also use polyurethane, but sometimes that tends to yellow with lighter tone woods. So just keep that in mind um, if you're gonna be sealing your wood, which I do recommend if it's outside. Now I did have my sign just with a screw in the wall, but that doesn't hold up well with the wind. So I am gonna actually use a drill bit and drill out the sides for a small nail to go in. That way I can actually put these little question mark hooks in there. They're great for hanging up items like pictures because they do not fall off with the wind. 
I got this pillow from the at home store. I like the soft blue color and then this one is from Walmart. Love the design on it and just kind of um, adds a little pop to the bench. I don't know if you know this, but Walmart actually sells lots of Cricut items now, so you can pick up all your supplies there and you can customize a pillow for your front porch if you wanted to as well. Lastly, I added this little weeping plant from Ikea and I thought it looked good kind of, you know, bring the whole space together, but I'll show you though how the front porch looks in a little bit. We're going to plant the rest of the front yard first and bring it all together. So when you're ready to plant your flowers, the best thing to do is to get a knife basically and cut a T in the fa um, landscape fabric. That way you have um, an area that you can dig a hole in and just press that to the side and I'll show you how we're going to tuck it underneath and everything once we finish digging the hole. Once you get your hole dug, then mix in some nice compost with the native soil or a good garden mix. Mix it all together and then remove your plant, kind of roll it a little bit, that way it comes out of the container. And then cut the roots a couple spots on it. It will actually kickstart the growth process for you in new roots. It sounds weird, but it does work. And you're just going to make sure you backfill in and leave a little ring around each of the plants and make sure you water them really, really good. That way they'll be nice and happy. And then with the landscape fabric, you're just going to tuck it underneath those little triangles that were flat out. And then that way um, it'll still keep part of the weeds out and then you can put your mulch around the plant and then you can put your landscape rock or whatever else you're using. So thankfully we have a tractor to actually lift most of the rock because rock is really heavy and the thicker it is, or I guess the chunkier it is, the harder it is to move. If you get like a three quarter crush, it's really not bad to move, but this is was making my shoulders burn because the thicker the rock, the harder it is to push. And then the tractor couldn't get too much further because of the uh, irrigation, so we just dumped it and then used a flat shovel to scoop and dump it, um, which works a lot easier than a spaded shovel. And just as I was finishing up and I ran out of gravel, the concrete guys came and added a really nice curbing to separate the gravel from the grass that we want to eventually put in. And it just looks so much better. I can't wait for it all to be done. I still have a few more plants to get as well as gravel, but look how beautiful the bumblebee is. I love the way the front porch turned out. It has a beautiful pop-up color to it. It's warm and it's inviting. And hopefully you've got lots of ideas on ways that you can decorate your porch for spring and summer. Use items that just bring you so much joy and make your home feel that much more special. Definitely be sure to check out Cricut. I'll have the link down below as well as the designs from today's video. That way you guys can make your custom sign and doormat if you want to. You can also give them as gifts. It's just a wonderful tool to have because it's so versatile. I do want to actually add some um, name plates for all the different plants I have in the front yard and I'll be using my Cricut to make that soon. So definitely stay tuned for that to happen. I have a huge vegetable, berry, and flower garden to share with you guys probably next month. I'm still working on it. Many, many hours working in the dirt, but it's going to be so worth it in the end. Everything in today's video will be linked down below for you to get if you'd like to decorate your home with it as well. I hope you all have an amazing day. Give this video a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and check the description box below. I have lots more DIYs and decorating makeover videos in there as well as more to come, so make sure you're subscribed. I hope you guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.